Shell profits taking a hit from issues in Nigeria and a weaker Aussie dollar. Shell's chief executive, Peter Vosa, joins us from the company's headquarters in The Hague. Peter, good to see you again. Um, I, I mentioned Nigeria. I mentioned the Aussie dollar adding in the write downs uh, in North America. W what are you telling investors they, sh they should feel good about over the next six to 12 months? I think the complexity in the second quarter results is very high. You mentioned the issues. Therefore, I think we need to look through the quarter as it was complex. But the operational performance was good. Refineries, chemical crackers, production up 2%, uh, excluding Nigeria, etc. I think the message is very clear. We are focused on cash, which I always have done. $12 billion cash flow in the quarter, $70 billion over the last 18 months. So we are in, on our journey for the $200 billion cash flow targets in, in uh, over four years. We have got 17 projects starting up in 13 and 14, half a million barrels of um, production there, and five of them are big ones. The five alone will generate $4 billion dollar cash flow growth um, by 2015. So I think uh, the growth story continues and that's the important one. And, th and you're getting a sense that is allaying investors' concerns about some of these bigger issues? Um, I think it's a good discussions with, um, with the investors on how we use our cash, which is actually uh, paying a very attractive dividend. We are doing, obviously, um, organic growth investments, which I just explained, and we're also doing buybacks. And I think that's a package which is interesting for the shareholders in the, uh, for the longer term. But in, like in any business, if you just take a snapshot of a quarter, you may have some issues. And that's why I say I'm disappointed about all mm -hmm. of these issues. But we should not, we should not lose the, the long-term um, kind of trend we are on. Um, just just um, one, one sentence we noticed in the release. Uh, you're not targeting oil and gas production volumes. You're focusing on financial performance now. Um, is that somewhat of a retreat? Uh, let me put it this way. I think we have um, uh, announced some further asset sales over the last few weeks, like uh, some in Nigeria, apart from investing in Nigeria as well. We have said that in uh, the whole unconventional business, we sell more. So we are on, on putting more assets up for sale on the one side. Uh, then we have refocused our unconventional portfolio. And more importantly, after uh, extensive discussions with shareholders, they like the financial performance drive and those targets, and they don't mm. want to have the long-term production chasing. And therefore, we are focusing on the next um, uh, two and a half years to deliver the financial performance. And that's where the focus will be. There will be production growth in, in the longer term. That's why we are investing at the end of the day. But uh, that's a secondary issue. Um, therefore, we are retiring the target and we are focusing on financial performance. OK, um, let, let's talk about Nigeria. Um, ha has there been that discussion that you, you might cut your losses entirely in Nigeria? No, absolutely not. Um, Nigeria is very long in natural resources, has a lot of gas and oil still to be developed. We just took further final investment decisions on big projects in Nigeria. But the whole sabotage issue and therefore the stealing of uh, products, uh, but also the, the environmental uh, devastation needs to be tackled. That can only be tackled by uh, the Nigerian government leading it, by all the industry players in it, the communities in it, mm. but also international governments. And that, that needs to be going, getting going so that we can actually develop uh, for the society and the economy uh, the natural resources. So we are committed to Nigeria, but we need to sort out some of the issues together with others. OK, um, the write downs in North America that I talked about at the beginning, uh, shale related write downs. What, what's gone wrong with these wells? As you know, we... Um, uh, are in developing that unconventional business, so gas and liquid rich shale. We are on the liquid rich shale on an exploration um, um, journey, and therefore some of the wells work, some of the wells don't work, or not to our satisfaction, maybe too small. 
So we are operating in nine different um, areas. We are focusing that down to uh, half of those um, areas and therefore some asset sales will have to go. And some of the latest um, uh, well results which we got um, have forced us to write down some of the exploration expenses which mm -hmm. we have done. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what has happened in the Q2. And just a, a quick re related question on Alaska and, and, and shale gas there. What, what do you think will be your experience exposure there in Alaska, say, in five years from now? We are going through the exploration phase in Alaska. Uh, the Arctic has a lot of res resources and we want to see how much is there before we take any final de decision on the long-term development. So we want to drill over the next few years um, in Alaska exploration wells to see actually uh, how many resources are there and what development we could do for the production by the way, which is in the second half of the next decade. So this is about de-risking um, the areas which we have, see what is there, and then think about the development. So this is a normal exploration play, but given the expected resources are big, it therefore is also an expensive exploration campaign. Uh, just a final question on the, 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 the new CEO designate, Mr. Van Burden. How involved is he already in day-to-day in -day discussions on all of these issues that we've, do, we've already discussed today, you and I? Yeah, first of all, I think it's great. Uh, welcome to Ben. Great guy for, to lead us forward. Um, this is very simple. It takes over the 1st of January. So therefore, I'm running the business up to that point. He runs downstream still, which is not a small business either. So he needs to actually finish that. We need to bring in his successor. And then towards the end of the year, we will have some uh, handover. But I, as you know, will stay on until the end of March. So we have got plenty of time to get into all of this. He's an executive committee member, so he is fully involved in all the strategic discussions. And therefore, I think uh, you can see through that angle that he's involved on, in most of the discussions which we have today. All right. Always good to talk with you, Peter. Uh, many thanks for talking with us. Peter Fossa, uh, Shell CEO, live from The Hague. That's it from me. I'm Axel Frothel. This is Reuters.